The broadcast is now starting. All <coughs> attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, Carlos, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And apologies for the delay. My name is Tamar Lutfi. I'm the coordinator for the GESI Secretariat. Just to remind you, the GESI webinar series serves as a platform for the GESI network members to share experience and expertise in evidence synthesis and to learn about potential collaborations. Just to give you a brief uh, explanation about GoToWebinar in case this is your first time, everyone is automatically muted except the presenter. If you have any question, please use the option of raise your hand that is on the left of your GoToWebinar toolbar. Uh, or you can insert your questions and type in your questions um, and then we'll be able to read them out loud and get you answers uh, at the end of the session. Today's session is on challenges of health technology assessment methodology, balance between completeness and efficiency. We are very happy to have Professor Carlos Eduardo Pizon Flores and Dr. Miguel Hernando Diaz Ortega with us today. Professor Carlos is the Deputy Director of Health Technology Assessment at the Instituto de Evaluación Tecnológica en Salud in Colombia. His experience in research relates to methods innovation, performance of health systems, evaluation of quality of health services, construction and validation of indicators for access, utilization and coverage of health services. Carlos is a physician from the Universidad del Rosario and received a master's degree in clinical epidemiology from the Pontificia, I'm sorry, Universidad Javeriana and a doctor of health systems research from the National Institute of Public Health of Mexico. Thank you, Carlos, for joining us today. Carlos, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Arne, if you can see my, my screen right now? Yes. Okay. And the presentation right now, can you see that? Yes, great. Okay. Uh, okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, Today, uh, we, we will talk about uh, rapid implemented the methodology in the coverage and pricing uh, regulation here in Colombia. Uh, we will talk about five topics. The first is the overview of rapid reviews. The second is enabled aspects for the production of rapid reviews. Uh, the third topic uh, will be talked about strategies to mitigate bias in conducting rapid reviews. The fourth is the future prospect for our agency in the development of reviews. And the five elements that we wanted to talk about as is a key message for you. Well, uh, overview of rapid reviews. I, I, I know that you, you know about rapid reviews methodology, but uh, well, uh, it's try to refresh uh, uh, the, the concepts. Mm, the idea of systematic review is to evaluate the best uh, evidence uh, to try to give a conclusion uh, or in our case is to, to give a recommendation uh, if we, we want it or if we can include it a new technology uh, or in the benefit plans here in Colombia. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we use the systematic reviews uh, to give a recommendation of these investment uh, uh, technologies from our uh, health system. Uh, uh, 
Right, the idea of systematic review is to guarantee a systematic process. And uh, uh, you know that uh, the, the meaning of systematic is try to, to do in a, a, a method that uh, could be reproducible in, in the way to, to, to we can to guarantee that the, the conclusion is in base of evidence and that evidence you can use and, uh, and doing again the process and maybe can uh, uh, give the same conclusion. Well, uh, what is rapid review? Uh, I think that the, the, the purpose is to, to, to say that really, really what is not a rapid review and what is not a rapid review is not a narrative process. Is not a, a non-systematic review. Yeah. Is not a non-reproducible process. Well, what is a rapid review? It's a form of knowledge synthesis in which components of systematic review process are simplified or omitted to produce information in a timely manner. Uh, why exist rapid reviews? Uh, the, the reason that we uh, develop rapid reviews is to, uh, to decrease the time to produce evidence and uh, decrease the tensions between the, the policy making process and generation evidence that we can use to, to try to guarantee to take up the better decision. What is the utility of the rapid reviews? It is to support evidence informing this decision making. Uh, what is the factors that determine the need of rapid review? Uh, the clinical urgency. Yeah, if, you, if we wanted to see in the view of uh, informed medical decision, uh, the intense demand for uptaking of technology regulatory or legal requirements, limit time and resources to conduct full systematic review. The target audiences for rapid review, we, we identify four. Uh, however, uh, the rapid review we can use in, uh, and we can give the information in any stakeholder that included in the health system. But the most important stakeholders uh, are government policymakers, healthcare institutions, health professionals, and patient associations. Rapid health training assessment is the same as rapid reviews, or is different? And the answer is, is different, right? Maybe we can use rapid reviews to, to guarantee the base of the recommendation of health technology assessment, but the health technology assessment has other things uh, like a pressure process that you can uh, enforce the recommendation in base of the, the scientific evidence in the assessment and evidence that you uh, created in the appraisal process. Uh, the rapid review is the base of the assessment process of the health technology assessment and decrease the time to do in that part. But it's important to guarantee or to establish that the difference between rapid health technology assessment and rapid review process. In the rapid health technology assessment, you, you have to include other factors, uh, all, all other values of the technologies that in the rapid review is only the scientific evidence that bases your recommendation or conclusions. The systematic review are governed by the principles of minimize bias and minimize random error. Uh, this kind of, um, of reduction of the risk, uh, you guarantee uh, through methodological rigor. Uh, in, on the other hand, uh, we have to guarantee the accountability process uh, through transparency and guarantee the reproducibility uh, of the process if, if 
we wanted to update it, the process in some cases, or if we want to guarantee that other person, other people, or other institution wanted to reproduce our process. Well, uh, and we have the other problem that is that we needed to do it faster. With the, with the, we, we want it and we need to do it uh, faster and try to guarantee the same issues that we uh, manage in a conventional systematic review. But well, uh, in, in whatever cases of conventional systematic review, uh, the idea is to guarantee the quality of this process. And the question here is, well, what is the quality of rapid reviews? Are the definitive answer or uh, we have to do other things to guarantee the completely and definitive answer? Well, this uh, slide, uh, we try to show you the time of the process. Uh, the timing for a Cochrane review is a conventional uh, systematic review. And uh, well, well, if you know uh, the, some reports of Cochrane, the timing uh, of these systematic reviews uh, can be uh, since eight months to 2.5 years. And this is a lot of time in the process that you needed to uh, generate it faster the evidence to take up better decisions in, in any kind of health system around the world. In Colombia, we had uh, some special uh, uh, process that is in this investment uh, of the technologies in the benefit plant. And this is a particular process because uh, the law here in Colombia established that uh, our agency has to do it, the health and assessment process uh, in three months. And in that part of the process, we think that the best option to try to give a good recommendation for, for this investment process uh, is to include the rapid review methods. Uh, right now, we did 119 health technology assessment reports based on rapid reviews. And of these 119 health technology assessments, 56 health technology assessments uh, support the disinvestment recommendation of the benefit plan. Uh, we doing we did this process in four months. We we can't uh, uh, accomplish the three months of law, and we have to change some part of the law to try to guarantee the balance between uh, methods, rigorosity, and the good answer of the recommendation. Uh, these rapid reviews is uh, guaranteed two aspects. The first is to try to guarantee the narrow of uh, the search uh, evidence. And the second is to, to try to guarantee the, the critical appraisal process of the evidence. Well, uh, this is a summarize of the, the difference between rapid review and systematic review. The first part is the time frame, uh, maybe less than five weeks. Uh, systematic review since six months to, to two years. The question uh, in rapid review, the question uh, is uh, specify a priori. I may include broad, broad big question framework. Uh, in the conventional systematic review, uh, often a focus of clinical question. Uh, in the source and searches, uh, in the rapid review, the source may be limited, but sources and strategies made explicit. Uh, and in the systematic uh, conventional review, it's a comprehensive sources, search and explicit strategies. 
the selection on evidence uh, in the in two in the two cases is in base of a criterion a priori. Yeah. Maybe some differences that are up review, we have to uniformly apply it that criterion. The systematic review in some cases, and you know that we 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 can change some criterion in the depends of the evidence. The appraisal process in, in, in both cases is a rigorous process. And uh, we only included systematic reviews uh, in the rapid reviews. Uh, in the conventional systematic review, you know that you have to include the primary studies and some cases uh, systematic reviews uh, studies. Uh, the synthesis is descri descriptive summary and categorization of the data. In systematic review, you know is uh, we 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 must do the qualitative summaries, and uh, in the majority cases, we have to do the meta analysis. The inference, uh, well, I think that is is the great uh, difference between rapid review and systematic review because in the rapid review, the the inference is limited, uh, and we have to to be pre precautions of the interpretation, interpretation of the findings. Uh, in the systematic review, well, uh, it's not limited. And uh, in some cases, we, we, we have to do a lot of conclusions. And in a long synthesis of evidence uh, that uh, summarize all findings of the evidence. Uh, what guarantee of rapid review? Well, guarantee the time of the process, the satisfaction of the process to try to to give us the recommendation of uh, for a policymaker process. But on the other hand, uh, we increase the bias uh, or the risk of bias of the process, and sometimes we. Uh, because we only search systematic reviewing in a specific databases, uh, we don't have uh, all the information that we wanted to include it in the rapid review process. Uh, what is the, the role of the rapid reviews in our health technology assessment process? Well, uh, if you see the, the picture, and the rapid review is included in the analyze of scientific judgment assessment. Uh, it's the same as the classical systematic review uh, about uh, effectiveness and safety or efficacy and safety, whatever you want. And uh, uh, we included in the appraisal process the values of the technology and that values is, uh, is the, the sources of that values is or are is all the stakeholders related with the technology. Why is important the system, the rapid reviews? Uh, well, it's important because it's the first time in Colombia that we doing that and try to decrease the timing of, of production of these kind of uh, documents. Another hand uh, the, is the the challenge that included this rapid review in appraisal process, and like a sources of scientific evidence to try to uh, redact a recommendation of the technology here in Colombia. Uh, this slide tried to show you the, the difference between the, the rapid review and systematic review in the spectrum of, of one of these methods. And you see, for example, uh, the, the challenge that we have to include a rapid review in the reliance on systematic review for information, the intimated relation with a specific end users in interactive fashion. And, and this is very important because while well, the rapid review uh, give the a, a specific answer of a specific question. 
you you can the possibility to include other questions or or a, a broad question uh, because well uh, we don't have time uh, we don't have the the, the, the people uh, the, the, the sufficient people to do in that and uh, it is important that the policy makers or stakeholders know that if you do in the rap review is because you have a very specific questions to uh, to give an answer in base of that methods uh, other thing that is very important is to identify the real end users sometimes we think that is uh, policy makers but for example here the end user is the patients and the citizens because in the in a disinvestment process we needed to include that stakeholders to know the, the the results of the of the system of the rapid reviews and how to incorporate them in the recommendation of the exclusion of the technology. The typology of rapid review products. Uh, we, we work in three products. Uh, the evidence briefs for policy. We 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 do in a policy briefs uh, right now. We finished uh, uh, the, a policy brief about the sugar drinking uh, and for the tobacco and uh, nicotine uh, devices uh, related with nicotine uh, devices. Uh, we have the other uh, rapid review products, sorry, the summary of abstracts and reviews of reviews. Uh, we currently doing more th this third uh, because well uh, is the uh, the process that we well, that, that we permitted uh, to doing in uh, this investment mechanisms here in Colombia we 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 we, we use the methods that the CDTH use and McMaster University through Health Forum doing about in the rapid response program. We try to, to adapt it, that methods in uh, guide methodological guidelines here to do to try to do in the rapid reviews. But the, the document that we 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 recommended if you wanted to do it uh, rapid reviews is this that uh, that was edited by Andrea Trico and collaborated people persons and is published in the World Health Organization. Uh, in that book you can find all all methodologies all methodological issues that you can uh, have in mind if you wanted to do in a, a rapid review. If you speak Spanish, uh, we, we, we did a rapid review guidelines that we published in our website. Uh, well, this paper of Cochrane Rapid Review Methods is the, the first paper that published that group about the, the, the recommendations methods about rapid reviews. And it's very important because you, uh, you know that Cochrane work right now, not only in rapid review response, uh, uh, in some issue, we, they work in how to include patients and consumers in, in the development of systematic review process. And this, this topic is very important for us and for you if you think that a uh, rapid review could be incorporated uh, representative and legitimacy, le legitimization uh, aspects uh, to include it, uh, all the stakeholders in develop uh, rapid review responses. Uh, you know that Prospero uh, uh, published the protocols of systematic reviews and Prospero opened the options that you can publish your protocol of rapid review responses. 
And this is very important because, well, you know, if you don't publish the protocol, you have a, a, a high risk of a reported bias uh, or a publication bias too. Uh, we actually uh, publish all protocols of our rapid reviews in our website. And uh, uh, since this year, we published our protocols in Prospero of this rapid review to guarantee the transparency and decrease or reduce the risk of bias of reported bias. Well, uh, other experience that we wanted to show you about uh, rapid reviews is that developing a World Health Organization Rapid Advice Guidelines uh, in Public Health Emergencies. Uh, this paper is very interesting because they use the approach on established rapid review methods and incorporate it into existing uh, guideline development process. And uh, they reduce the time to doing a guideline in a half of the time that they uh, spent uh, right now in a classical guidelines, uh, clinical practice guidelines, sorry. Uh, this is other cases of how you can use the rapid reviews uh, in the guideline process and how to guarantee uh, the quality of the reported and uh, reduce the time to do it. Clinical practice guideline. This is our experience about uh, the, the comparisons between the, the rapid review methodologies of the research evidence for evidence informed decision making in health policy. And uh, uh, in that uh, studies, the, the three conclusions are the first is there is no agreed definition of rapid review in the literature and no agreed methodology for conducting rapid review. We, we have that problem right now and, and this is uh, we don't have a standardization methods because well, the rapid review uh, methods is defining for the process, the specific process, the specific question and sometimes the time that we have to, to do it, the rapid review. The second conclusion of this study is the graded care needs to be taken in improving the transparency of the methods using rapid reviews products. And I think that this is uh, one of the most important conclusion of this presentation is, well, you need to be very transparent in the methods and how to guarantee the quality of this report. The third conclusion is that there is not evidence available to suggest that rapid reviews should not be done or that they are misleading in any way. Well, you know the ecosystems of Cochrane review, uh, systematic reviews. And we try to guarantee these ecosystems in our rapid reviews process. Uh, why? Uh, because well, we uh, our country is is a very critical uh, to the methods or criticizes a lot the methodologies. And um, for example, the pharmaceutical industry uh, have a lot of uh, uh, point of discussion about our rapid review methods, and we have to incorporate it is the international experience and in that case is the ecosystem of Cochrane reviews help us to guarantee that, that we doing the, the homework very well or the work very well. If you remember the Cochrane ecosystems, uh, we have 11 steps, yeah? But uh, I wanted to show you that we try to uh, prioritize three steps to guarantee the quality of our rapid reviews. The, the first is that the selection studies, the six steps. The second is the assess of risk of bias. And the third is the 
analyze the data. Yeah. In these three steps, uh, our agency uh, should to uh, follow up these steps to try to guarantee the quality of our rapid reviews in the time that we have to, to give a recommendation. The other part of, of the rapid reviews that we do in, in Colombia is this blue uh, arrow. Uh, because, well, uh, we included patients in the decision and we included patients at the beginning of the assessment, uh, at the beginning of the rapid review, to try to uh, evaluate it all outcomes related with them and, and prioritize the outcomes in critical, important, and non important outcomes like a great ETV framework. The other part is to include the citizens, but well, we have to do more actions be in that way because we have a lot of problems to include it citizens in, in our rapid reviews for the time in the first topic. And the second is because, well, our citizens right now is not, uh, they, they are not uh, a lot of information as to how uh, participated in health and assessment and what is the relevance of, of their uh, participation in, in the rapid review process. Uh, well, we, we work in that. Uh, we have a lot of experience and successful experience in incorporated patients in the rapid reviews right now. Uh, they done um, work in the in the synthesis of evidence, but they work a lot in the selection of evidence and doing the recommendation at the end of the process. Well, uh, this uh, article, uh, this this picture uh, is on base of the articles to publish uh, Andrea Trico and collaborators and collaborators in 2015, uh, and show the streamlined steps used across the rapid reviews. Yeah, it's in base in 82 studies reporting this information, and you see, for example. Uh, in which part we can avoid it or, or, or decrease the time to doing the, the steps. For example, uh, if you wanted to decrease the time in the great literature search in the rapid review, we can uh, to, to, to avoid it that part. Uh, to uh, titles and abstract screening, well, uh, Right now, uh, we use only metadata base uh, to include it only systematic reviews of the literature. And this topic uh, uh, here, uh, doing only for one epidemiology, not, no, not two. Well, how, how we know if our system, uh, rapid reviews uh, are good or not good uh, in the methodological uh, issues. Well, uh, if you know uh, Prisma work in a rapid review statement, uh, and we use that to uh, evaluate it, or, or the first draft that we can find it in the website, we use it to try to guarantee the quality of evidence of these rapid reviews. Uh, we recommended that if you wanted to evaluate your rapid review, use this Prisma rapid review framework. Amstar 2, well, uh, if you know, uh, since uh, Cochrane published the uh, Robbie's, uh, Robbie's statement, uh, Amstar uh, work a lot into included a new tools of uh, Amstar 2 that is more comprehensive process in base of the reporting of the systematic review. Uh, right now, well, uh, we are uh, we are in discussion. If you read some papers, evaluated that the problem of Rob is, is that it's very good. Uh, content uh, 
tools, but it's very difficult to guarantee the reproducibility of the process. Uh, and you need uh, an expert in methods to implement it, that uh, tool. Uh, Amstar 2, I think that if you see the, the tool, uh, it's more complex than the first version. But uh, it's possible that uh, we don't need it, uh, a specialist in methods to try to incorporate the Amstar 2. Uh, it's a good tool. Uh, uh, we we work uh, only in Robis, but Amstar 2, I think in, in this couple of years, um, maybe it can change the things of the use of Robis and, uh, and Amstar 2. Uh, well, and a scope review of rapid review methods. Uh, well, how, how we know if the, our conclusion in rapid, rapid reviews is the same or similar to a conventional systematic review? Well, Andrea Trico published a article in 2015, and they, they used uh, four cases studies to identify and compare the results of rapid review to systematic review. In three of these four cases, uh, found that the conclusion between rapid reviews and systematic review were congruent. Uh, in our rapid reviews here in Colombia, we use the conclusion of the primary studies. Remember that in, in our cases, the primary studies uh, are the systematic reviews of in, in included in the rapid reviews. Uh, and that method, we, 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 we catch it of the McMaster performance that, that recommended to use the concept and conclusion of the systematic reviews that you included in the rapid review. And in that case, we omitted the analysis, or critical analysis of the synthesis of evidence that we can use or, or, or do in in the process. Uh, this is the other, other studies to, to, to publish again with uh, Dr. Andrea Trico and Emily Ryan uh, in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology. It's a retrospective comparison of systematic review with the same topic of rapid review, right? Uh, in that study, uh, the, the results was that six studies contained 16 reviews per were included, convening nine topics. Overall, uh, rapid reviews, use of related methods more often, no search of great literature employing, one reviewer to screen studies, engaging in fever experts, including fever studies, and providing shorter reports with poor reported quality and faster completion. Reviews reported similar conclusion with two expectations. Yeah. You can see how we can uh, use rapid reviews and uh, maybe have the same conclusion of the conventional systematic review. What is the guarantee uh, to try to find the same conclusion? Well, uh, if, if we summarize uh, until here, our presentation, three topics. The first is to uh, search uh, systematic reviews. Yeah. The second is to try to guarantee the selection of, uh, of all the evidence, uh, try to guarantee the appraisal of the evidence. And the third is uh, one of the most important is try to guarantee that the conclusion of systematic reviews uh, that you included in your rapid review, try to maintain it in the rapid review conclusion. Enable aspect for the production of rapid reviews, right? Uh, systematic reviews, automatization technology as well. We included uh, in our process automatization technologies that to, to try to guarantee the reduce of timing uh, of the systematic review process. Uh, you know that Cochrane work a lot with Microsoft, 
and to try to improve the efficiency of systematic review production. And we hope that this year uh, they published the first beta version of the automatization uh, process of systematic review. Uh, in our rapid reviews, we use the epistemonicus database methods. Well, if you don't hear epistemonicus database, it's a, a Chilean but database. It used a, a machine learning uh, technology. And in that database uh, used, uh, or, or you can find only systematic reviews of the literature and is very specific a database for that document, that type of documents. The other tool that we use is the uh, Ryan. Ryan is an open access software that permitted to doing more efficient the selection of title and abstract process. That tool has a uh, um, machine learning uh, uh, technology that uh, predicted your uh, specify uh, and sensi sensibility uh, selection uh, about uh, title and abstract process. This is very useful and it's free, it's free right now. I don't know if you, if you know about this, this software. The other software that we use is the uh, robot reviewer, uh, and uh, we try to 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 use to, to systematic reviews process to do it, uh, in the in the process to uh, make the appraisal of the literature, uh, and this uh, tool are very is very good for try to organize the, the process to, to try to do in a very good following process of the systematic reviews. Covidence, well, we, we use covidence uh, to try to, to guarantee the, the, the quality of the process. Uh, we are currently doing uh, some machine learning technologies and to try to include the uh, Robbins and Robbins E in the quality assessment in our systematic reviews. Well, uh, this is the, this is show you uh, our citizens report. It. The citizen report it, uh, is in base of the rapid reviews uh, process. And you see the political recommendation here is in base of the evidence. Uh, the evidence is uh, scientific evidence and the evidence of the stakeholders that, that stay in our process. We included, uh, we tried to implement it, the concept of blocks of evidence that, uh, or evidence blocks that NCCM uh, propose proposal in the in the in their website the third point is, is the strategies to mitigate bias in conducting rapid reviews uh, well we we are commissioned the process to reviewers with previous sprints in develop a convention and systematic reviews we publish the review protocol. We do in the search studies by a snowball search of gray literature and generate spaces for in the identification of studies with the stakeholders. We establish the quality control points by a second review and that doing the literature search, reference screening and data extraction. extraction. And, and the, at last, and the, the last point is uh, the future prospects for our agency in the development of rapid reviews. Uh, what well, the first is diffusion scope and predefined methods. 
The second is expansion of the number of electronic sources of scientific evidence and use of intercontinent uh, evidence tools. Uh, this part is very important because, well, actually we only use epistemic but we wanted to uh, include a trip database and a Cochrane uh, review, reviews database to include it all, all the scope of that. Uh, the third process that we wanted to work right now is use of machine based learning. Uh, what well, we, we talk about to use the machine learning to include a Robins and Rob, Robins E tools in the automatization process. The four points is to incorporation of the evidence to decision framework of GRADE. Yeah, because it's very a strength framework that we can use to guarantee a transparency and very solid recommendation in our health and assessments. Field tests of the use of block of evidence. We actually, we doing a pilot study for this block of evidence for citizens and patients reported. And uh, well, uh, the, the first results uh, are, are permitted uh, very good comprehensive of evidence and the recommendation that we doing right now. And the last point is that it's trained the quality control system. We 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 incorporated and implemented uh, a system of guarantee the quality of the produce these elements of these documents. Now we have three steps. The first step is well, if you don't have uh, a very good uh, question and a specific question you can pass uh, to the to the other process. The second uh, step uh, is uh, when you have uh, the, the all the evidence that you will be made the appraisal. Uh, if you don't have all evidence, uh, uh, you can pass to the next steps. And the third is the recommendation process. If you don't include patients, citizens, health professionals, and the developer group in that process, you can um, uh, emit it, the recommendation. Key message for you, I mean, you wanted to do a uh, uh, rapid review. The first, the rapid review are an alternative of synthesis of scientific evidence, recognized and accepted internationally. It is important that the rapid reviews are transparent in terms of the methods used for their development, just as it is ideal that there is a formal statement of the limitation represented by the synthesis of the evidence obtained. The incorporation of the technology's tools is required to optimize the development times of the revisions. Of the reviews, sorry. In the develop of rapid reviews, it's ideal to have a team of reviewers with a specific training and high degrees of prior experience in conventional systematic review. Five, the finding of rapid review should be interpret interpreted in light of the context appraisal of the technology and is, that point is very important because in some cases if we avoided the context maybe you doing a very bad recommendation uh, in base of the evidence of the context and scientific evidence well this is our last slide uh, thank you very much again for you attention your interest to be a part of this webinar and uh, well if you wanted any questions or suggestion or opinion uh, i am open to receive right now thank you so much again
Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for this great presentation. I think we have two minutes um, if anyone would like to ask any specific question. Well, Carlos, I would have something to ask you actually. Um, what is the time frame in which you, uh, IETS has been able to do all this work? So when did you start with doing uh, rapid reviews um, to be able to uh, to become an expert or to uh, be able to identify all these challenges and try to find solutions for them? Well, uh, uh, we, our time is four months. Yeah, but all process to this investment uh, mechanisms is uh, six months. Uh, the, the Ministry of Health has uh, two months to try to take a decision. The, the final decision, it, it is in charge of Ministry of Health. And they, he, they, ha, they have the, our report mm -hmm. and, and the evidence of the stakeholders to try to take a the better decision that they, they should that they have to, to take. Right. But our agency has only four months uh, mm. to do in rapid reviews. Uh, we, are, we have other experience about the scope reviews uh, for uh, 10 days. We, we, we do in a uh, very uh, scope review without appraisal, uh, critical appraisal of the evidence in 10 days. And it, 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 it is not in, in all cases. Is only in the cases where when the Ministry of Health need a quickly answer of the uh, horizon scanning evidence, right? Uh, and no more. Okay, great. Um, so we have a question from Tamara Credo from Cochrane, South Africa. Uh, please go ahead, Tamara. Oh hi! So I, I'm try. I, I, I think this was a great presentation. Thanks so much. I'm trying to understand how how these rapid reviews fit into the HTA speak. You know, there's a lot of jargon around HTA, and how you know do you do these rapid rapid evidence syntheses for efficacy, and alongside them a kind of rapid review for the economic evidence? What are the decision makers asking for? Because we have a lot of, we have a bit of, we're moving towards universal health coverage in South Africa and there's talk about HTA um, and we keep talking about evidence syntheses and, and kind of more the rapid reviews. But so there's kind of people coming from different perspectives and I'm just interested to hear your experience and your uh, opinion. Okay, great. very good question, very interesting. Well, uh, we do rapid review only right now only for efficacy, effectiveness, and safety uh, outcomes. Yeah, uh, criteria. Uh, sometimes uh, we included economical uh, information about the cost of the intervention and maybe the cost of the health service uh, delivery. In, in some cases, for example, uh, we had uh, we we did a rapid review of infertility procedures here in Colombia, and we have to include the information of economical issues about the uh, impact, the, the potential impact that that technology technologies could be produced in the health, in the Colombian health system. But it's not a standardization process right now. Uh, we're doing the economical uh, analysis in a conventional way, right? Uh, we're doing a economical uh, analysis in four months uh, and the budget impact analysis in three months. Uh, if the Ministry of Health wanted to do all health technology assessment process uh, we do in, in the six or seven months uh, but uh, we don't uh, implemented the rapid response in the health economics 
uh, way to uh, because well we 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 think that if they they wanted that information we must to do the conventional methods to health economics evaluation and uh, well we you know that it's very difficult to do in a, a model or Markov model in a short time and if they wanted to to, to give a, a a very straight uh, recommendation where well, we, we need to spend more time yeah in effectiveness efficacy and safety yeah we use right now the rapid review or rapid response in the uh, disinvestment mechanisms uh, but in, in in the integral uh, updated of benefit plan uh, actually we use the conventional method the other question, the first question that you 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 did about uh, how to incorporate how how our agency incorporated rapid review in health and ESS. Now, well, uh, I think that uh, the law uh, uh, obligated to to doing that change, yeah, because well, we 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 had only four months to give a completely answer and to give a recommendation uh, we we must uh, we should uh, uh, to work in that way uh, but uh, if you see i i or, or i think I, and it's my personal view uh, that is very important to introduce the the process to reduce the time of doing the systematic review because it, well, you know that systematic review, uh, it, it is right now one of the most important elements to uh, in the health technology assessment. And uh, it's very useful to, to, to have that information to make a very good recommendation. And if you reduce this timing, maybe it's possible that, you, that, the, that the policy maker see the agency uh, the, the, their support of the very important decisions okay great um so tamara adds up that uh, she agrees and that they think uh, we should be encouraging systematic review methods for evaluating economic data rather than modeling on cherry picked economic evaluations well i think this is an ongoing discussion and it would be great if we can actually have uh, another discussion, just to uh, so a follow-up discussion for this. But I think we are out of time for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, let us know. You will automatically receive an email uh, to thank you for being part of this webinar. So feel free to reply to the email with your questions. The recording and the slides for this session will be available within a week on GESI Initiative website. Thank you, Carlos, very much for your session. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Tamara. Thank you so much, all of, uh, of people that uh, connected today. And uh, well, if you have some doubts, some suggestions, uh, well, here is uh, our email and details contact if you wanted to, to, to follow up the discussion. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you so much, Tamara. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.